What's up, you guys? You see this guy's hair. We're going to take it to the next level. Uh, I know you've seen the thumbnail. This one came out pretty fresh. I'm kind of excited to share with you guys the process. And uh, let's go. We're going to begin by putting in our line with the absolute hitter. This cuts down to five zeros. Now, the idea is to get the hair as close as possible for the electric shaver. So that way we make a jump from the electric shaver to the five zero. It's a super small jump, real easy to make, and we get the blend just right. Only thing you really want to be careful about in this step is just make sure that your line is even on both sides. Check in the mirror, get some perspective, and uh, make sure that it's even all the way around. Now, this isn't the same guy, but I just wanted to show you guys the motion of the electric shaver. All right, when I'm using the Bronze Series 9, I only want to use one of the foils. Now, Gamma recently just released a Uno, kind of perfect for this situation for some touch up work. But as you can see, as I get close to that line, I stop just underneath and I begin lifting out. Another motion you might make is coming down with the grain. And basically, you just want to kind of play with those with those steps. You might not get this step perfect. It's okay. You can return to the trimmer later if you really have to. But you want to get this as smooth as possible. And before you go forward, you want to make sure you see no line in between the skin and that 5-0. All right, let's rock with this fade. Let's go with the open taper. I got the taper lever in the open position, and I'm rocking with a C motion. Now, if you notice, I'm not leaving the head too much. When I move, my motion is very much like you would erase pencil from a piece of paper. I'm just going back and forth. I know it doesn't cut on the downstroke, but as you go back and forth, that's the motion you need to make, staying anchored up against the head, holding it flat so that you get the distance that you're supposed to get. And then we're going to begin clicking that lever down one click at a time, staying just below where I was in that previous step. Another thing I want you guys to take note of is I'm sort of mixing it up with my motions. I'm trying to go against the grain as most the most that I can, but I'm moving back and forth against the grain in what I call the crisscross pattern. And I'm using that fade brush to help me get all them loose hairs out of the way to make sure that I'm, I'm on point and that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. You can't tell what you're supposed to be cutting if you're not using some type of brush to at least knock the hair away. Recently, Gamma just started putting out these brushes. These brushes are dope. They're so cool. Um, I like them. They're firm, but they're not so firm that they like scratch people. So they're just they're just a great brush to fade with, and I, I'd encourage you guys to go check them out. You get 10% off with anything Gamma if you use my code. So if you guys are thinking about buying one of these sick clippers, like this this ergo is just it's just so easy to blend with it really is probably one of the easiest machines i've ever used so let's get down to business here we were all the way down with the closed taper that line is gone now if it is not gone we're going to go back to the trimmer for a second i'm just going to make sure that i'm making that transition that i want to see if you see any issues in the previous step you need to go back to that it's it's something i call fade trapping now what i mean by that is when you know what step you're on and what step you just passed, it's very easy to identify where you need to go back to fix it. So go back, fix it before you get all the way done. And then you're like, hey, can I get that out with a half? Don't, don't, be, don't be making guesswork. Just jump back and be thorough. So the next step you're seeing me here, I have the one and one half in the open position. And I just wanted to remove some of this bulk. This might not be necessary depending on how you approach it. But I don't like to try to blend into a big massive amount of hair, especially if it's curly, it can get real tricky. So I'm just going to knock that down uh, with it in the open position and then gradually begin closing it. And again, I keep on combing it so that I can go against the grain the best that I can. Now using the exact same steps that we used when we did the open taper, we're going to repeat that exact same process just with the number one guard on it. Now you'll notice that I skipped the half guard and the reason why I do that is simple. Watch how quickly and how easily this blend starts to come together. If I jump to the half guard now, it'll probably be too short and I might push the hair a little bit too high. I might push the fade a little bit too high. So I want to see what type of damage I can do with the one on and I'll begin working it into the closed position and you'll see that most of this blend will start to come together. And when I go to the half guard, it's going to be a very marginal step. It's not going to be to take out a whole bunch of hair. Now, this is definitely an area of concern. The half guard can really make or break your cut. So I just want you guys to be real careful when you put that on. And when I put that on, it's generally just a detailing step. It's just a very small amount of hair that I'm trying to get rid of, a small shadow. So of course, always in the half position, um, always in the open position when I return with the half. 
So now you see me kind of getting down here. I got this all the way closed. I've done whatever damage I could do with it. Now you got the half guard on and I have it in the open position and I begin closing it little by little. So just as I did that in the previous step, I'm doing the exact same thing. I know this blend is starting to come out good. It's very possible that you might even have to return to the open taper. In fact, I think I did because I did the half open, half closed, and that still did not remove the line. So I just wanna be thorough. I'll jump back to that step and I'll knock it out. But as you guys can see, the blend is starting to come together. I'm gonna to show you guys a little clipper over comb action here. And we're gonna begin kind of setting the stage for, for getting into that upper length. I could have used a number two here. In fact, I did use a number two on the other side just to show it two different ways. But yeah, just using this technique with clipper over comb, can help reduce the bulk. Now we have some curls in here and I'm gonna show you guys how I deal with these uh, with some shear over comb. So we're gonna comb this hair down. I wanna create that big line, that big weight line that you guys see. And I'm going to begin lifting, cutting, and moving up. Now we've talked about this on the live. I have a full video dedicated to this. So if this is something that you need to practice up on or brush up on, feel free to, to check that one out. But just trying to keep that bottom blade still and move up as I do. And I'm also bracing with my pinky on his forehead there just to try to keep keep my, um, my steadiness. And I'm combing down to kind of check what effect each time has had. See, that's kind of what this is all about. Like when you do shear over comb, you don't really know what's going on 100%. That's why you have to comb the hair back down and reset. Jumping over into the texturizing shears, which are designed to remove bulk without affecting length, this is perfect for reducing shadows. This is an essential step to any great fade. You'll see some of the best barbers on YouTube are probably using some texturizing shears at some point or another. So uh, feel free to check those out. Code Eddie, uh, Shear Police, that's, that's the brand that I'm using right now. I really like both their shears and I really like their texturizing shears. I'm not sure why I decided to do the uh, edge up right there, but I just seen those little hairs overhanging and it was just really bothering me. But if you see any other detail work that you feel you need to you know, jump on and get a hold of, um, go ahead and knock that out. So once I've finished up these steps on this side, I'm gonna speed through on the other side because we're gonna basically repeat the exact same steps. I'm gonna show you guys uh, the whole cut on that other side as well. But yeah, that's, that's basically uh, the way we'll knock it out. We're gonna go through with the open taper and it's always smart to do this on the entire head work it all the way around because it's just so easy for you guys to set guidelines in. It might be higher on one side or, or than the other. It's very easy to do that incorrectly. So make sure that you set that guideline in and you check it on both sides of the head. The only reason I cut half the head was because I'm filming and I didn't want to reposition the camera and everything like that. I just wanted to try to show you guys, you know, this smooth cut and uh, we're going to, we're going to do some enhancements on him too. But before that, we're going to do some sheer work. So let's, Let's get into this shear work. We're gonna talk about this the same way we did on the live. On the live, I explained everything that I do with shears, exactly every move, and if you feel like you need to get some, some really in-depth training on that, uh, feel free to check us out on the lives with that one. But we're basically gonna begin in the center of the head. We're gonna create that mohawk guideline, and you're going to see me begin working off uh, towards each edge. So as you see, I'm gonna work off towards that right side, moving back, moving back, staying very close to where my guide was. And then in my next step, I'm gonna pick up on that, that left side, moving back, moving back all the way, staying just off my guideline. Now remember, I, I did this shear over comb in the crown and just above the parietal ridge. So there's not gonna be a whole lot of work here. So once I got this all combed uh, out, I'm gonna go ahead and dry it. I'm gonna have this, once I got this all cut, I'm gonna go ahead and dry it. I'm gonna blow dry it forward and put a little bit of hairspray in it because now I wanna to try to get his edge up just perfect and I wanna throw some enhancements in there, but this is the thing, you know, it's it's one thing if you choose to put some enhancements um, in a cut to actually enhance it, or if you're putting some enhancements in a cut to actually like hide mistakes or whatever. So I'm, I'm all for en enhancements, I'm all about it. I just think that it's really important that you give everybody a really good quality cut so that the moment they wash that out, uh, they still have that good quality cut so I'm just kind of tying in my, my shear work to the top with some shear over comb uh, on the sides. I'm just looking for any curls that ain't laying right and any, any areas that seem a little darker. 
I'm going to throw a little bit of hairspray in it. We're going to blow dry them forward to try to get that hair to lay down, try to get some of them curls to lay down, try to make sure that all the, the work that I did uh, is, is showing that it's best. And this way I got a nice dry canvas to put my, my enhancements in. I'm going to use a product called Highlights. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but you see me here just using the pencil grip, moving across. I had already sort of addressed each corner. I made them nice and sharp. And I'm just using my mirror and I'm, I'm looking for any potential mistakes. And once I got it good, I'm going to jump right to the, the uh, razor here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knock out any loose hairs uh, that I see. So we're going to go around the back you know, the ears and everything like that. And uh, we're pretty much ready to, to get these enhancements going. I did see this curl. This curl was giving me such a, such a hard time to get to lay down. So after I blow dried it, I came back with the texturizing shears. Uh, looking at this video now, I definitely remember fighting with that a little bit more. But that could just be the side that he sleeps on. Could have just been laying funny that day. I mean, that's, that's hair. You know, anything is possible. This is a little freehand clipper technique I use. Uh, I should say freehand texturizing shear uh, technique I use just to really you know hit those spots and uh, make sure that everything is is perfect. I really should have sped this side and showed you guys uh, the easy side because everybody's got an easy side on their on their haircut and his easy side was definitely uh, the the side that I sort of sped through. But I figured I'd show you the I'd show you the tough side. So at the end of the day. Um, hitting that curl with a number two is is what did it is what what i felt like completed it so watch how we make this bald spot completely disappear uh this is a product called high beams i'll put a link in the description it's pretty dope because you don't need a compressor you don't need to do any mixing it sort of is like a like a fiber and color all in one and it, it, if you get the color matched up right it really really works nice so i'm going to go through i'm going to darken the top I'm gonna darken his line up a little bit. And uh, this is really nice, man. It's really nice to, to sort of enhance his, his lineup, especially if he's like me and he's losing a little bit of hair like me. I mean, it's it's awfully nice to be able to do this and uh, give somebody that, that real wow factor. And then the other, the other real benefit to this, uh, before you guys start talking trash down there in the comments, one of the other real benefits to this is you can get a great picture. Yes. Um, the client can go home, wash it out. Once this special event is over or whatever the reason is, yeah, that's that's true. But your picture does last forever. You can continue to advertise with that. You can continue to make money and, and, and show people what your skills are like. And uh, it's, it's one of the reasons why I love going the extra mile uh, for my clients, man, to just try to, you know, try to do everything I possibly can to, to bring them uh, the best cut that they can get. All right, you guys, let me know if you're feeling this style of tutorial. I usually go a lot harder than this. I usually break out another camera, do all this other stuff. But uh, the truth is YouTube just hates me. And I definitely don't get the, the type of feedback that I feel like um, I should from it. With 80,000 subscribers, I'll be lucky if 2,000 people even watch this video. Uh, so if you like this type of content, if you like what I'm doing over here, um, anything you could do to help me out is, is just awesome. A thumbs up, a like, a share. Um, a comment anything man I really appreciate that and if you guys want me to break down anything in the future just leave it in the comments and maybe I'll do a video this is the YouTube Barber Academy I'm Mr. Eddie Barber and I'm out of here guys peace